My point is simply this. When you line up, it's great. I got a whole bunch of guys. You probably wouldn't even be out this morning, but you want to just hear an encouraging word because many of you have made a decision in your heart. Man, I've been down for I don't know how many years, but you know what? Finally, man, I, I woke up. I'm going to get close to God. I'm going to get close to some peace. I'm going to get some joy in this place. And guess what? The spirit is celebrating. Man, the angels are excited about you. They're not booing you, excited. And boom, you get here. The only problem is mm, mm, we got some obstacles. And they determined, dude. Them big boys line up and they determined. Boom, I'm not, not only am I going to be in front of you, not only am I going to hit you, hit you low, hit you high, but I'm going to hold on to you too. And you wonder why you're facing such a battle. But can I make one announcement? If God be for you, who can be against you? I just want to say, when you come in close to him, if you make that decision today, man, there's going to be some power, some celebration, some excitement. And I just want you to know, bro, you can get there and you can go straight through it. No matter what you've been through, no matter what your, your young your daughter, your son, your girl going through, I just want you to know, man, boom. You get into that place today, and it's going to be exciting. Let's give my volunteers a big hand clap, man. All right. So real quick, real quick. Uh, my friend, uh, not only friend, but mentor and, and great, 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 great man who started this whole thing yesterday was our Bill Glass. As you know, he's bringing all kind of players in. We have guys who come from the Patriots, guys from the uh, Cleveland Browns, guys from the Green Bay Packers, Indianapolis Colts. Uh, so I, I just want to share real, real two quick stories, football stories. I think they'll be encouraging to you. And one I shared last time, the other one I've never shared till yesterday. So real quick. First story is this. Um, I was out. We were getting ready to play. It's one of my last games at USC. USC, we're trying to make it to the Rose Bowl. It's the biggest game of all. It's on national TV. Y'all know on Saturday when it's game time and game day, and it's crazy crowds and screaming. People out there all night the night before. It's crazy. But they got these ESPN dudes who get on every morning, and they got their suit and ties on, and they are experts, and they're predicting. And you know what they predicted, right? They predicted the team we playing is going to blow us out because not only do they got a whole bunch of first-round draft picks on the team, not only are they undefeated, and it's the end of the year, and nobody beat them yet, but they dominate. Here we are. We're having an up-and-down year. Game time comes. All of a sudden, we roll up to the huge stadium in the big luxury buses, and people get out. We got our suits and ties on, crowd going crazy. We walk down into the tunnel, get into the tunnel, get into the locker room, you hear that sound. Shoo, 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 shoo. Everybody getting tape, wrist tape, ankles tape, all this stuff going on. Now, all of a sudden, warm-ups go. You got warm-ups, two, three hours, whatever it is. A couple of hours after game, it's game time now. You know when it's game time because you start hearing that sound. Click, 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 click. We start to walk together as a team down the tunnel. Coliseum got a long tunnel. We get to the edge of the tunnel. The crowd is going crazy. The stadium is vibrating. There are 90,000 people in the stands. The ESPN cameras are all in our face. The adrenaline pumping. We run out on the field. UCLA run out of the field. And here's the deal. First series of the game. They break the huddle. Them big boys jog up to the line. They're like. <sighs> <laughs> QB come up. Red 88. Green 44. Hot. Hot. Ball snaps. My man drops back. He sets up. And sure enough. With precision, he just begins to shoo, 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 shoo. And they begin to go up and down the field on us. And no matter what we did, we couldn't stop them. It was like a track meet. I mean, they just boom, 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 boom. Little pretty boys catching bombs and doing their little pretty boy dances. And here's my point. We begin to get dominated and we begin to get embarrassed and we're getting blown out. And it's the worst first half I had been in in a long time. Everybody say first half. First half. Come on, everybody say first half. First half. By the end of the halftime, we ran off the field and up to the tunnel. The crowd began to go boo. And they booed us straight off the field. We got into halftime. Coach looked at us. He simply said one thing. Guys, I don't care what the score is because all we had was zero. I don't care what the crowd is saying. He said, I know one thing. 
I know you got what it takes, and I know we can beat this team. We just got to get a new plan. Everybody say, new plan? New plan. Second, half. Second half. One more time, new plan? New plan. Second, half. Second half. So they begin to change a whole bunch of things. One of the great mentors in my life, one of the great men throughout the nation who wrote many, many books, who lived and traveled all over the nation, 180 nations around the world, Dr. Edwin Lewis Cole, he said it like this. He said, change is not change until it's change. We done thought about it, we done prayed about it, we done sat in the cell and thought about it. But I cannot say this, you've been wanting change, but change doesn't just come. I cannot say this, by the spirit of the living God, God will not only change you, he will give you transformation. Amen. A caterpillar is crawling and it looks like nothing, but it goes into that cocoon and it actually almost liquefies and it transforms and it comes out and it's flying. And people say, how did that thing become that? And you're here today, and I don't know how many years it's been, but I'm here to say when God begins to change you, your spirit, your spirit is flying, man. I'm still down in here, but my spirit is flying. There's a light shining. And guess what? When it's flying, there's some peace and some favor, and it's all on your kids and all on your family and on your mama if she's still alive or your grandma. Long story, we came out, everybody say second half. Second half. We had a whole new scheme, everything, and they lined up just like they had before, like they was going to keep dominating us. And as they lined up, Red 88, H22 hot, ball snaps, first series, he drops back, sets up, but this time it's not the same. It took you over last time. You lost your faith last time. You tried this Christian thing last time. But this time, homeboy set up, and we coming from everywhere, from here, here, here. And it's like boom, boom, boom. And we just start coming back, coming back, coming back, coming back. And you know what happened, right? We came all the way back to within three points. There's only one problem, though. The clock is running out. There's no more time. Everybody say time. time. We need a miracle. And I got some men who came out today, not just to get some fresh air. He ain't telling nobody. I ain't telling nobody but me and God. God, I need a miracle. Can I say this? With man, it is impossible, but not with God. For with God, all things are possible. Man. You know what happened, right? We got the ball back. The ball is in your hand now, bro. It's in your hand. The word is in your hand. The word is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. And so what? We got the ball. So you know what happened, right? We got the ball back. Boom, 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 boom. We're coming back. We're driving down. We got to get all the way down the field. But then all of a sudden, our QB drops back. He sets up. My boy Rodney, he throws a bomb all the way down the field, running down the edge of the sidelines. He's this far away from stepping out of bounds. He's right on the edge, just like you. He's right on the edge. But he didn't step out. He kept going. He gets to the end zone. The ball is coming. The only problem is he's running so fast, he's going to run out the back of the end zone. And this ball is coming. He can't really catch it. You know why? Because the dude ain't giving it up that easy. It's just not that easy, man. It's never been easy. For a real man, I love it when it ain't easy, though, because real men like to fight. That's why you in here today. Many of you like to fight, right? Here we go. Ball comes. My boy, my boy Eric, Eric, he cannot catch the ball, but he reaches. He doesn't catch it, but he reaches. And when he reaches, he, he only gets it with one hand. He doesn't catch it. He tips it, but he tips it just enough to get the other hand on it and to help him pull it in. You know what the other hand is? The other hand is the help. God has sent the Holy Spirit to help you. He's called the helper. And when he pulls the ball in, it bobbles like this. But as soon as it bobbles, the dude hits him, boom, and they both fly out of bounds. The stadium erupts. The crowd is going crazy because nobody really knows. Did he catch it or did he not catch it? Is he in bounds or is he out of bounds? But all of a sudden, the man with the say-so, 
He got a striped shirt on. He stands in the corner and he does this touchdown. And everybody goes crazy. Y'all know what's up. You didn't know if you was going to get in or get out. But I just want to say Jesus is waiting, man. And he's going to say, touchdown. You made it, my man. It ain't because you was good enough. It ain't because you said enough prayers. It ain't because your mama prayed. It ain't because you lit some candles. He's going to say, it's just that one day they was out on that yard. And you just looked and said, God, I don't know nothing. I don't understand nothing. I just believe and I want to belong. Can I say the real point of the story is this? We didn't win the game the first half. We won the game the second Come on, we won the game the second half. We didn't win it with the old game plan. We won it when we got a new, new plan. plan. Everybody say new plan. New plan. Second, half. second half. Here's my point. Bill Glass made it yesterday. I'm going to reiterate it. My point is that there are a lot of men out here today, including myself, who've had some bad first halves. And the worst part about our first halves I don't know who hurt you, who wounded you. I don't know what your stepdad did against you. I don't know when your daddy left you. I don't know when your mama starts smoking them drugs. All I know is I remember me being a little bitty kid, man. And my mama had so Well, first of all, my father never came to any of my games. I'm in the Rose Bowl with 100,000 people cheering, but my father never watched. You know why? My father got caught up with the wrong crowd. My father got put in jail and all that stuff. He was selling those drugs, but my father ended up, you know, Boom, the stuff began to pull him down. You know that's going to always come down on you, right? When I was four years old, he committed suicide. When he committed suicide, they found his body in Texas. I had never been to Texas in my life. I'm a South from South Central L.A. They found him in a hotel room in Midland, my auntie told me. And she said he had one letter written, and it was to me. Why? I have no idea. But all I know is... Uh, once he committed suicide, my mother became very, very depressed, and my mother didn't know what to do. She had no money, no place to go. My mom started drinking. She had a little stash of drugs. And then I had cousins and people in my family, man, they started smoking that crack cocaine, and the crack cocaine began to tear and destroy our entire family up. Why am I saying this, man? First half. I go to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We can't pay the rent, so we moving and moving and moving and moving. By the time I'm in the 10th grade, I'm in my 19th different school. You can't play no football in 19 different schools, man. And then I can't read real well, so I'm in the remedial class. Why did I have them mention the highest grade point average thing? Because they tried to test me and tell me I didn't have it here. And they tried to tell you you didn't have it here, but they can't test what's in here today. I got an announcement today. You don't have to be great to get started. You just got to get started to be great. Right. Everybody say first half. First half. Second, half. Second half. What happened was my mom one day was at a funeral. My cousin that got killed. The man in that funeral began to preach about the good news and the grace of God. Not the judgment of God, but the grace of God. And he said, anybody who wants a great second half, anybody who wants the peace and the favor of God. My mama and a whole bunch of her sisters came forward at a funeral. And God, in a place of death, gave her life. She began to pray for me. My life began to change and transform. And so, man, I'm living the second half now. Why am I saying this to you today? Because I have no idea of your situation, but I do know this. The second half is not just for you. Some of you do got some kids out there. And all of a sudden, man, you're going to get a letter. And the letter's going to be your little boy. And your little boy going to be like, Daddy. See, they called him a delinquent. They said he was messing up. <laughs> they said he was in the thugging out. They said, but all of a sudden, he the top of the class. They say he the number one. Why? You don't know that his daddy laid on that bunk all night and talked to the coach in heaven. Yeah. And God began to change the second half for you and your kids. Your little daughter, she said, I feel like a princess. And she don't know why, but she don't know her daddy been connecting with the with the Lord of heaven, the Lord of the second half, the resurrection. Remember they said he was dead three days. It's over. It's done. The game is over. You blown out. You got zero. Ah, but the third day he rose again. Second half, he said, if I live now and forevermore. Can I say this with man? It's impossible, but not with God. One last time, everybody say second half. Second half. Last thing I can say about that is this. Uh, I don't know how bad it's been for you, but I do know there was a man named Job. He lost everything. You think you lost some money? You think you lost your kids because the crowd ain't booing you, but maybe it's your own family. Boo, they won't even come see you. Your kids, boo, they won't even write you. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We got boo, but I met dudes who got boo worse. Listen, but this man named Job lost everything. But you got to get you a Bible and go read it. Because in Job chapter 42, you know what it says? 
In 42.10, it says, And the Lord restored to Job twice as much. Twice as much. And verse 12 says, And the Lord blessed the second half of Job's life more than the first. Can I just say this? I'm from L.A., man. You know what they got in L.A.? They got a whole bunch of rides. They call them low riders. And all the essays, all the Mexicans, man, they fix them rides up and they be like, clean, bro. Man, they paint them rides, they got the rims, and then all the brothers rolling down Crenshaw Boulevard, Crenshaw, Slaughter, y'all see it, got the hydraulics on it. Hit the switch. Everybody hits it, hit the switch. Then it tilted. Guess what? Y'all know this. <laughs> Can I just make points, man? I'm just trying to make some points. Listen, shh, second half. Do you know what they do with the rides? They take some raggedy old rides. I got a raggedy old 1964 Chevy. And they restore it. And can I say this? Here's my point, man. I don't know what, how your faith in. I don't know what you've been thinking about. You done got religious. But God ain't like that. You know what they do? They restore it. Can I make my announcement? A restored ride is worth more than the original one. And a restored life, you restored back to God. It took you some time to slow down. You got more peace, more joy. I know your family been like this, but God is here to restore. I got 30 seconds to close with this last story. I was on the sidelines for the New York Giants. I was in my rookie year. We were playing a preseason game against a team called the New York Jets. The coach in front of me, he wasn't our head coach at the time. He's a very famous head coach now. You guys all know him. His name is Coach Bill Belichick. Y'all know what team he coached? Y'all know if he ever won any games? <laughs> a whole bunch of suit. Did y'all did y'all know he ran the Cowboys out that stadium, man? <laughs> I'll just mess with y'all. <laughs> Here's my point. I'm standing behind Coach Belichick. He's our defensive coordinator. The New York Jets keep running this play called a stretch play. They're running a the stretch. They snap 28 out of, and they snap the ball. And the running back would come like this. He would get the ball, and then everybody is stretching like this, and then he would cut it back. Boom, right between this gap. And they keep running this play, and they gaining yards like crazy. Boom, they popping it through. They ran the next play. Boom, they pop it through. And then they ran it one more time. Boom, quick dude, real, real little quick running back. Popped it through. Coach Belichick screaming, cussing. And so he screams and he says, Davis. I'm not on the field, I'm on the sideline. I just playing some special teams, right? Everybody say, Davis. Davis. <laughs> I'm right here, coach. I want to play. He grabs me and he says, I don't know what Abraham is doing. Abraham is the other linebacker that's in. He said, I don't know what he's doing. He said, but I need you to get in there and I need you to plug that gap. Everybody say, plug the gap. He said, they're going to run it again, and I need you. They're going to act like it's a stretch, but they're coming straight through here, and I need you to plug the gap. So I'm like, plug the gap, plug the gap, plug the gap. <laughs> so I run in. Abraham, you out. Abraham, you out. Line up. Now, I'm nervous. I'm rookie, man. I ain't played much, right? Like, I'm standing in the huddle. I'm so fired up, but I'm nervous, so I'm hyperventilating. I'm like, <laughs> Like, you all right, man? You all right? I'm all right, man. I'm all right. I'm all right. <laughs> but they call it even ready. Break. We line up. Line up just like this, right? So, man, crap. You got to stand. It's New York against New York. New York Giants against New York Jets. So, them some crazy folks, man. They crazy. They crazy in the Texas folks, man. You know. <laughs> so, I line up like this. All of a sudden, they come. They break the huddle. Break. Big old old lineman jogging up. Big belly's jiggling up and down. Big boy gets set in his stance like, 
I'm looking at him like, plug the gap, plug the gap, plug the gap. Big boy looking at me, he breathing hard like, Ooh. his hair vibrating, his lips jiggling. Look like two pancakes fighting for some syrup. Ooh. 88, 44, high, high, ball snaps, sure enough. They all take a step out like this. They run a stretch again, and sure enough, they hand it to my little quick man. He get the hand, and so when he gets the ball, you know what it means, right? The big boy in front of me, he took his stretch, stepped like he was gonna go outside, and then he turned around, and he coming straight at me. <laughs> and in my mind, you know what I'm saying in my mouth, right? Everybody say, plug the gap, plug the gap. I'm running at him, he running at me. His cheeks all greasy and sweating like he had his head in a KFC bucket all day. My only saving grace was, the big boy about 330, whatever he is, my only saving grace was I, I'm not that tall. I'm only like 6'1", right? That was my saving grace. Because big boy is coming, but because I'm shorter, you know, I'm strong, but I'm shorter, so I got leverage, man. So when he come, we finally explode into each other. Boom! And I'm able to get up underneath him. And just like I showed y'all that hand moving, boom, when I hit him, I hit him so hard, but I came from a, a place of leverage. I came from a foundation. Hold on, hold on, foundation. 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 